Good morning. Welcome back to Hiking with Kathleen. A beautiful morning is unfolding. The temperatures are about minus 18 degrees Celsius. So this is the second time this season that I have worn this one-piece uh, snow outfit, snowmobile outfit, I guess. I just have a base layer underneath. So just uh, thermals, that's it, and a vest um, on top. So this is keeping me nice and toasty. And uh, so I wanted to mention, when you walk in the same area, approximately the same time on your hikes, you get to know animal behavior. And so it wasn't long ago that I walked past a pair of, gold, uh, a pair of bald eagles and um, they're in the same spot. I saw them another time I was through here. So the key is consistency. And that's why I like to come consistently along the same trails at roughly the same time of day so that I can get to know their behaviors and possibly that leads to a sighting. So anyway, I hope you enjoy today's video on hiking with Kathleen and enjoy the, the peace and serenity that I enjoy every time I'm out in the woods. have some uh, raccoon tracks that are following along on the trail that I'm on and uh, yeah you can see they've got pretty distinctive tracks big toes <laughs> I'll show you we know that this raccoon was heading uphill we just look at the direction of the toes and we can tell from that So I've found some fresh deer tracks. I'll show them to you. And then what we'll do is we'll figure out which direction the deer was walking in. So they are what we would call a cloven hoofed animal. That means split toe. So that set of tracks was heading towards the top end of the, str the screen. If you look carefully, I'm going to direct the camera towards the water. And if you look at the surface of the water, you'll be able to see that it's cold enough that the water in a river that has a flow is starting to freeze up.
So I found that it's so cold out here that uh, this camera here that I'm using right now, the GoPro, is normally a rock star under cold temperatures and it's uh, it, it's freezing. So that means it, it freezes <laughs> while I'm in the middle of a sentence or in the middle of showing you a beautiful scene. So I've been carrying it tucked inside here and that seems to be working out just fine. So in this fresh snow, I have two sets of tracks that otherwise might be considered similar and this helps to show them distinctly apart. One is a gray squirrel on the right and the other is a cottontail and uh, you'll see they're actually uh, similar in size because the animals are sort of similar in size but the tracks are quite different. fail to be mesmerized by this view. And there's another thing that's really intriguing to me is I hadn't been here early enough to get fresh coyote tracks to be able to easily distinguish them from family pets. Because um, usually um, if they get trampled or if there are other dogs, they sort of crisscross and it's really hard to distinguish a clear set of coyote tracks. So this is kind of neat. I'm going to show you that although I've walked up the trail, it doesn't, in this particular woodlot, stick to the trail. It kind of zigzags along as it's looking for prey. And here you'll see the tracks cross along the ridge and then they do pick up the trail that I'll be taking in just a few moments. So the exciting thing for me is that today I'll be following coyote tracks in this particular woodlot. Hmm. Such beauty. Uh, temperature right now, the raw temperature is minus 14 degrees Celsius. And uh, that would come up to about minus 20 degrees, including the wind chill. So it's chilly out today, but that's okay. We'll see what interesting sightings lie ahead of us on this morning's hike. So now I'm tracking the coyote tracks over this fallen tree. In one direction, it went under the fallen tree. When it returned, going the other way, it went over. So I'll show you that. Now this is the, uh, <laughs> this is one of those trails that's very steep. So I won't be recording my descent because I notice a lot of the trail has the, an ice covering under the layer of snow. So I'm gonna hope it all works out.
we're following coyote tracks that have just um, gone over this creek that's now frozen and it's just continuing on up the trail in search of prey which is what it was doing uh, last night or in the wee hours of the morning very cool So I just missed uh, videoing some muskrat activity. I startled it and there's not a lot of open water so it kind of confines its activities. So I videoed its footsteps so you could see how it entered the water and then it swam away and they can stay underwater for some time. So now as I'm continuing along in the trail I see that I'm following in the steps of a deer, a white-tailed deer. So I'll show you those tracks. I'm heading in the same direction that the deer was traveling in. It's pretty quiet out here on the trails today. And part of it, I think, is because <laughs> the, um, the ice under the thin layer of snow is really treacherous. So I guess I would probably have to wear my other cleats, the heavy duty ones, that look like they're meant for Mount Everest. Um, either that or using uh, my trekking poles. Um, it makes it difficult using trekking poles when I have all my equipment. I think that's probably what I'm going to have to start switching to because uh, with these really cold temperatures the ice doesn't have any give so the cleats that I am wearing don't seem to be making a big you know a big difference uh, there's a little bit of grip but there's a lot of slipperiness to the surface of the uh, rock solid ice these cleats were pretty much my go-to all of last year uh, I only used those heavy duty ones you know a few times I found that what happened with them is uh, they would gather clumps of snow between the really thick teeth um, or deep teeth. But anyway, all right, <laughs> I'm going to try and navigate the rest of this successfully so I don't tumble. I'm out here at dawn. It's minus 28 degrees Celsius and uh, I've lightened my load. I don't have the cameras. Uh, I have one compact camera that does not function well in low temperatures and I just keep it tucked in there. And this GoPro also does not function well at these low temperatures. So I keep it tucked away in here. But I wanted to let you know um, I'm excited about today's hike and I'm excited to bring you along and at the end I'm going to show you what I do in order to safeguard myself from these extremely cold temperatures when I'm out for my hike. Stay tuned.
So far it's been an absolutely beautiful hike. I saw the eagles this morning. Yeah, I didn't get to video them. But now that I know where they perch, and I know what their sound, uh, their voice sounds like, I usually get to see them, or at least hear them. And uh, so this is an open area I often like to stop at, just in case, because sometimes this is where I can see perhaps deer. Uh, it's just easier for me because there aren't trees in the way. Uh, the vegetation in this area is lower. So I came across this aftermath from a kill which took place um, probably during the course of this evening, last night if that is. Um, the fur that I see are from an eastern cottontail. Um, so it's very likely it was uh, a coyote that uh, made short order of that uh, eastern cottontail, which is a rabbit. And uh, that's one of their main food sources and we have a plentiful supply, but they go, uh, they, cottontails are active during the evening and so are coyotes. So anyway, I'll show you some more tufts of fur, but uh, anyway, I don't want it to be too graphic, but it's just that we know that this happens, and so it just means that it was one more night that the coyote was able to survive because it, uh, it had a meal. You can see that ice is forming on the river, even though it's like a fast flowing river. The geese don't know that I'm not going to approach them. But the ice that is forming along the sides of the Thames River is offering another measure of safety because it's a platform that they can now rest on um, because they normally would they normally would rest on the, the banks of the Thames River. Sometimes if there are rocks in the middle of, of the uh, river, they'll uh, take to those as well. But in this case now, they have sort of an ice shelf. And so there's a lot of the area that's occupied by Canada geese that are at peace, except when I stop <laughs> and linger. I realize you can probably just hear me as I'm crunching through this, uh, through the, the snow that's so cold. But when I stand still and listen to the sounds of the Thames River, I hear the sounds of ice as some of it has formed, broken away, moved down, crashed into other sheets of ice. And so it's a uh, constant evolution of what will become the ice formation along the Thames River, as long as the temperatures continue to stay as cold as they are.
just going to let you listen to the sounds that I'm currently enjoying. Yeah, in just the uh, few moments that I was uh, just letting you listen to the sounds, that's when I saw a pileated woodpecker fly from the other side of the river over, um, and a bald eagle that was sitting in a perch that I didn't even notice, and so it flew uh, as well uh, down along the river. So that's the neat thing, is if you just stay still and listen, the forest comes to life all around you. So I'm not feeling nearly as warm because my uh, face is now um, uncovered. But the reason I had to walk, I had to change the positioning of my head covering is because then it'll just constantly fog up my glasses and right now I'm walking into the sun so I was warm when my whole face was covered and uh, so it's just to show you that these can be worn this way but it's just not nearly as practical it's not as warm especially when the temperature is so low So to give you a bit of an idea of what it is that I am wearing when I go out on a hike on a day like today where it was uh, between minus 24 and minus 26 degrees Celsius, um, I was very toasty the whole way. So some ideas. So this is the covering I wore in order to protect my head and I really just had room for my eyes but on my way back when I showed you I was uh, wearing sunglasses if you wear sunglasses while having this on it'll just cause all the glass uh, the, the sunglasses to fog up but what was really nice is the airflow comes through this cloth it warms it up before it hits my mouth but what it does do is it makes it very moist but that's dry moisture as it's condensing because of it's like the warm air from your breath hits the cold outside and the condensation is what results um, but it still kept me very nice and toasty that I really made it made a difference when I took this when I opened this up so that my face would be exposed I kept feeling <laughs> my chin and my uh, my cheeks to make sure that I wasn't showing any signs of uh, frostbite so that was a really great thing. 
I'm doing this with my hat on because, of course, I have hat head now. <laughs> um, I always wear my ice cleats. So I'm going to show you uh, what they look like. These ice cleats have a good number of teeth. They work very well, but they do fall off. So to remedy that, all you do is you um, just get some Velcro where you are walking on the Velcro. This is how you attach it. And you strap this around your toe so that it stays on your boot. And there have been many times I have almost walked out of my pair of uh, ice cleats. So I recommend that. I did have two pairs of socks, regular socks, and then these ones. They're not wool, but they are heavy duty ones. I found it was too much. So it depends on how sensitive you are. This is something I only acquired in the last couple of months, and that is I have gloves that are heated. So it has a little battery pack inside here that you charge up through a USB plug-in. I did not need to put these, uh, turn these on at all, but they give you three settings. So you push this button and it lights up when it's on. I've never had to wear it in the red zone. That's the medium heat and that's the uh, lowest intensity of heat. So I've always just, uh, you know, kept it at the low end. It also preserves the heat so that if I end up, or the battery pack, it preserves the power in case I do need it somewhere along my hike. But today I was basically just motoring along so to just, uh, you know, stay nice and toasty. Now, this one piece, I, I bought this about a month ago. Oh my God, it's wonderful. This is something that uh, is lined, so it prevents any drafts or anything like that getting inside my outfit and, and cooling down my core temperature. So, so I keep my, my cell phone secured inside so it stays out of the cold. I keep my extra camera batteries in here, so um, I make sure I'm well equipped that way. Um, the other thing is, underneath is another new acquirement. I just got this this year. This is a heated vest. Again, it has power buttons on it. So if I needed heat, there are two sections that turn on. I did not use this at all today. So you can just go down in temperature. Whenever I use this, I, again, just go for the lowest temperature possible to preserve the heat, the, the battery that is, because the battery will ultimately get used up more quickly. I have the lined vest, or sorry, I have the heated vest, and then I have a lined shirt. Other than that, I just have a base layer. I like to go as light as possible, so just base layer on the top, base layer on the bottom. I don't even usually wear a lined shirt underneath. I usually just wear maybe my heated vest and, and that's about it. So that gives you an idea. Um, the last thing I'm going to show you are my boots. Now, just so you know, these boots, <laughs> I've had them for well over 30 years. When I used to work in the environment, uh, as in teaching environmental ed, I bought these boots way back then. The only thing I've had to replace is the liner, and I did that actually just last year. <laughs> so they have good tread. The ice cleats, they go on them just fine, just like they go on my, uh, my hiking boots. These are easily replaceable because, of course, you'll go through laces over time. But the reason I wanted to wear these today is because then that keeps my ankles nice and warm. So this is something that helped to complete the outfit that I was wearing today. So as far as being able to take any of the images I took today, um, I did bring my GoPro and then I brought just a compact camera that has a 35 uh, times zoom lens and I just carry them inside my coat. And the reason for that is it is something that those cameras just don't handle this 
ultra cold weather very well. So the batteries die quickly and it's not really because the battery is dying, it's just, it's, uh, yeah, it's just sensitive to the cold. As much as you bring extra batteries, the best thing you can do for your camera is just keep it protected from the cold. And um, I couldn't do that with my large Canon camera. So I just uh, forego bringing that. Um, I went really lightweight, didn't bring my tripod or anything today. And I uh, just kept things in, tucked inside my coat. So I hope that you found that this was helpful to see what kind of um, outerwear I use when I'm going on my hikes, uh, when it's in really low temperatures. Um, and nothing stands in my way of being able to enjoy nature. And I hope that you find a lot of opportunity to get into the out of doors, especially if you, if you live in a temperate climate uh, like we do in Ontario, Canada. And uh, there's so much beauty out there. And I'm so glad that I had a chance to get out and show you some of that on my hike today. Thanks for joining me. If you like this video, please click like. If you'd like to see more content like this, um, consider subscribing. I'd love to have you along every Tuesday. Bye for now.